Your people don't want to do their job and you're okay with that? You should be fired. If you can't overcome, I need to think about it. On the lot. And you have to go get your manager. You are useless to a car dealership. Let me say it again. You are useless. Guys, the automotive industry is easy. Let's just get that out of the way real quick, all right? So for those of you that think the automotive industry is tough, you're an absolute idiot. It is not tough, it is very easy. Everybody write this down, transportation space. Last I checked, everybody in the world wanted a car, everybody needed a car, everybody is buying a car. So if you're in the transportation space, you're selling something that 100% of the world has to have, number one, needs and wants. Everybody write this down. If you can ever find a product that people need and want, need and want, you're the most luckiest person on planet Earth, okay? Now, my question is, I'm gonna go through some stuff with you for a minute. Number one, skill, okay? Skill's pretty important. What I've learned in the automotive industry, and by the way, would it be cool on this call if I was like real direct and we talked about why so many people in the automotive industry suck, is that okay? And by the way, hey, I'm not being like, I love the automotive space. I became a millionaire in the automotive space, so can you. And by the way, listen to me, if you do it right, you can have the best life on planet Earth. You don't have to be like no one else around you. You can completely build your own identity. You can live life on your terms. Everybody write down entrepreneur. What I love about being an entrepreneur is, is an entrepreneur is somebody that doesn't have to buy the building. They don't have to uh, pay for the financing. They don't have to go buy all the cars. They don't have to pay the interest on the vehicles. You know, they don't have to pay for the detail department. Do you guys pay for the detail department? No. May, may come off your dock. It may, if you're in management, you're a GM, it may come off your books. But really, at the end of the day, the entrepreneur, the one that stroked the check, Mr. Johnson's you know, BMW, that's the guy that's the, in, that the entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. But listen to me, the greatest entrepreneurs, which are people that work for entrepreneurs who can become multimillionaires, every one of you, get your thinking up, you must work like an entrepreneur. Okay, and that's where, I, that's where on this call I wanna go over this with you. Let's pretend it was your business for a minute, cause it is. Let's pretend it was your check, cause it is. Every one of you right now, what are the common things that we see in the automotive industry why people are not successful? Well, number one, they're not prepared. Number one thing I've ever learned about the automotive industry, guys, is that studying, studying is something that they don't require you to do in the automotive industry, they don't. They tell you that you got to train 15 minutes a day. Listen, do you want to give your family a life they've never had? You want to break your bloodline? You want to crush it? You want to kill it? You're going to train for 15 minutes a day? Could you imagine wanting to do anything in life? Imagine this. I want to go to the NFL. Yep, you got to, you got to practice 15 minutes a day. That's a joke. You're not going to the NFL. Everybody right now, you want to know why people aren't making any money? You want to know why people are struggling in an industry that's easy? It's easy. Listen. I'm gonna explain this to you very, very simply, okay? I have salespeople that literally do what I tell them to do. By the way, general managers, owners, managers, everybody listen, everything starts with sales, it starts with the front line. I have salespeople that were selling 15, 10 to 15 cars a month that do what I, that I tell them to do and they turn into 60 to 70 car hands and they break company records. You say, well, how? Okay, let's go through it really simply. Number one, everybody in the company, if they don't have something to sell, okay, these are the three rules. And by the way, I'm gonna walk through these with you all the way through how to be the most successful person on planet Earth in the automotive industry. Number one, if they don't have something to sell, they're on the phone making the dials, they're posting on social media, or they're doing follow-up. They're looking for something to sell. That's it. If I don't have a, listen, Okay, so everybody act like you were going to come work for me, and I'm hiring. And Nick goes, hey, Andy, I want to get a job with you at ABC BMW. I say, okay, cool, Nick. Listen, let me tell you how this goes, okay? And by the way, I want, I want to make sure you understand what, and by the way, if your company doesn't operate this, this way right now, I would recommend if you're not in charge, you're in charge of you. So you run this way moving forward. Number one, if you're not selling something, Nick, which means you don't have a client in front of your face, you are looking for something to sell. Now, if you don't have a customer in front of you and you've spent hours looking for something to sell, which is making the dials, okay, or on social media, or doing follow-up, or calling orphan owner customers, 
you're training to get better. See, so Nick, let me explain this. You're going to work for eight to 10 hours a day, every day in the automotive industry. All I want you to do is one of three things. Nick, five things? Nope, three things. Four things? Nope, three things. Seven things? Nope, three things. Ready? Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Selling something. Nick, do you have a customer in front of you? Yep. Bam. You're doing your job. Okay, Nick, you're at the coffee pot having a conversation with Jan about the football game. That's not on the list. That's not on the list. By the way, if a manager would just be clear, everybody write this down, clear expectations. Salespeople on this call, I want to tell you something. If your manager is a barstool warrior, barstool warrior, you know who I'm talking about, right? He's a sit down, he's a keyboard warrior. Nah, 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 all day long, he's not leading anybody, he's just giving out orders because he's the boss. That guy's not going to make you better. You're going to make you better. How are you going to do that? Hey, by the way, no disrespect. If you're a badass manager and you're on this call, you're like, that ain't me. That ain't me, so I'm not talking to you. But if you are that person on here that doesn't lead anybody, that doesn't make people better, that doesn't give their sales team clear expectations, you need to get your shit together. You're not making anyone better. By the way, to be completely clear, a manager's job, number one job, should be to break the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule is 20% of the people make 80% of the money, 80% of the people make 20% of the money. A manager, a great manager, will always be judged on the bottom 80% of his floor. Say what, Andy? A great manager will always be judged on the bottom 80%. Did you say top 20? Nope. Top 20 can leave and go work anywhere they want. They don't need to be babysat. They're hungry. They're motivated. They wake up with their shoes on. They don't need anybody to tell them what to do, and they go to work. Yep, they, they go take ups. They make the dials. They have non-negotiables. They have standards. Listen, you can help make them better. You can help them make more money. But the bottom 80 is where your skill as a leader comes into play. So anyways, I just want to say this. If you take the average of the salespeople in the dealership, that'll be the manager, the general managers, the owners, average of skill. Now, people say, well, not everybody's going to be that great. Okay, everybody do me a favor. Act like it was your first day. Are you ready? Do you want me to show you how to take a guy on his first day who's never been in the automotive industry and get him to sell 25 cars first month? Everybody said, no ways. Watch. Ready? All right. So we're going to talk to Nick. Nick, Nick, if you have a customer, okay, if you have a customer, you're doing your job. If you don't have a customer, you're going to be looking for one. Okay, Andy, what does that mean looking for one? Well, we're going to call people that bought a car a few years ago. We're going to go to the internet, the BDC department, and we're going to get a list of people that bought a car a couple years ago. And we're going to call them and we're going to introduce ourselves. Hey, what's going on? It's Nick down here at ABC BMW. You know, I saw you bought your car, you know, two, three years ago. You know, it's, you're just going to make a call. It's called outbound call. We're not going to sit down. We're not going to wait. We're not going to play on our cell phone. And by the way, these scripts, they're all in the training center. All of them. All you got to do is memorize the script. By the way, Nick, you don't have to think about what to say because we already know what to say. All you got to do is get a pen, piece of paper, spiral notebook. You got to write down the script about probably seven to 10 times after seven to 10 times, your brain's gonna skip ahead. It's gonna say, hey, I know this now. And then you're gonna be able to start making the calls. You're not gonna sound scripted anymore. And people are gonna start coming into the dealerships and appointments are gonna start showing up. Now, Nick, if you're not selling something and you're not looking for something to sell, because I get it, when I'm making calls for three hours, sometimes I need a break too. I'm human just like you. Nick, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna recharge, Nick. We're not going to recharge by going out and disconnecting from the sales job and go talk to Tommy out on the sales floor and smoke a cigarette with him, go back to service and talk to JJ about the football game for an hour and a half. We're going to train. We're going to plug into something that's going to make us better, that's going to renew our mind, that's going to give us more energy, that's going to increase our self-esteem, our self-belief, our self-worth. We're going to get in there and we're going to learn. The more you learn, the more you earn. Okay, cool. You got it, Nick? All right, yep, Nick, clear. Okay, 
if you're not doing one of those three things then you don't work here and by the way you want to tell your people exactly how to be successful everybody write this down nobody wants undependable success no one you know why people quit the car business you know why turnover exists because of undependable success that's why they quit they don't quit because they're making a bunch of money they quit because they don't know how to be successful I'm telling every one of you right now those are the three things you need to do first and foremost secondly everybody listen I don't know why we don't do this but we should make people shake hands the first week before they ever even go out and talk to anybody so we can get them used to mastering a stranger in their training phase listen I know this sounds crazy but I would take Liam let's just get, say I got Liam with me and he's a new salesman and and you don't have to do this but I'm gonna tell you what I would do everybody think outside the box be different don't be like everyone else hey by the way you know what I learned do you really want these people to have a memorable experience with you as their leader and when they work for you like you really help them become successful and have dependable success so I would say hey Liam there's a thing that we do here and we talk to new people all the time now there's a rule everybody listen real quick there's a rule most people think you got to build common ground to build rapport with people you really you, you can do that but really you just speak to people with familiarity like you know them you say Andy I don't understand well most people they've been taught by old school salespeople or leaders or managers that are question based I'm cool with asking questions but I'm gonna explain something to you me talking to you like we're not friends and like I don't know you asking you a lot of questions is not gonna make you fall in love with me me talking to you like I've known you my whole life and speaking to you with familiarity and out carrying you and caring about you is gonna make you fall in love with me everybody write this down it's called mastering a stranger and by the way some of you need to rewrite rewrite the road to the cell if I was to rewrite it it would go two steps before probably any of y'all's road to the cell step one would be you got to have the best attitude in the world Liam by the way when you come work here you will have the best attitude in the world I don't care how good you are at selling in the beginning what I care about and by the way I want you to hit your numbers but I want you to have the best attitude what you won't bring in production you'll bring in attitude say what listen to me you will bring the best attitude to this company in the beginning we don't expect you to come in here and be number one month one but we do expect you to come in here and have the best attitude in the company month one can you do that Nick yes I can Bam! that's important hey who, who's setting the standard me super important guys if you're watching this video right now and you're like Andy I'm not built like that bullshit yes you are okay you gotta train it's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. I'm setting this guy up for success now by the way number one was the best attitude in the company that should be step one of the road to the cell number two delusional belief guys this is a big one you don't want to miss this delusional belief means everybody can buy came to buy and will buy as long as they do your as long as you do your job that's the way it goes listen I'm gonna explain something to you if I speak Liam if you go out and you speak to everybody like they're a buyer they're gonna buy some if you go out there and speak to everybody like they're the most important thing in the world and you love them and you know they could be anywhere in the world and the fact that they're here that means everything to you they're gonna buy from you I don't care by the way listen Liam I don't care what they say they could be anywhere in the world right now but they're not anywhere in the world they're here with you they're a buyer listen 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 they say when they walk in I'm not here to buy anything okay Liam why are they here because they're here to buy something listen no means yes no means yes I, ne I need you to be crystal clear and understand this they could be anywhere in the world people are very busy they got lots of stuff to do you think these people ain't got nothing to do that's why they're here I guarantee they got 50 other things to do but they're here you know why because they're here to buy something and you know what you're gonna do Liam number one you're gonna have the best attitude in the world number two you're gonna have a delusional belief everybody can buy came to buy and will buy as long as you do your job then number three boom you're gonna master the stranger right out the gate BAM you're gonna make a best friend now I want to tell you how I did it and you can do it however you want 
And by the way, listen to me. I want to tell you guys, the craziest win. Say what, Andy? The craziest people win. If you take any successful person and you crack them open, they're crazy. They don't make statues of the critics and the haters. They make statues of the crazy dreamers. You guys want to sell 60 cars a month, 70 cars a month, 80 cars a month? I don't care how many cars your, your store record is, how many cars are on the ground, how many cars the top guys say. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. No one knows what's inside of you but you, and I know how to break this stuff open. Now watch this. I used to send my sales guys, I would take them down to the mall. You say, why would you take them to the mall? Because I would just tell them, go walk around. I would be like, hey, guys, we're going to walk around the courtyard. All you're going to do is shake people's hands all day. That's all I want you to do, Liam. Just go shake their, hey, what's going on? It's Andy. Nice mall, isn't it? Where are you guys from? What's your name? By the way, do they have anything to sell? Nope, nothing to sell. You know what they got to learn to do? Have a conversation. In a mall. By the way, would you guys want to practice on your customers? or a practice on other people who you have nothing to sell to. And by the way, I don't need anything from you. I just want to say hi and be nice. Man, what happened to the innovativeness in sales? Okay? All right, now I'm going to move on. Out, outside, great attitude, delusional belief, mastering a stranger. Those are the most important things. Now you got the road to the sell, but we got this little, and road sell simple. People come in, they want to drive a car. They find a car, they want to drive a car. Sometimes they got to qualify for a car if it's a special finance lot. Sometimes you work at a good credit store and everybody qualifies because the area you live in, everybody's got good credit. Okay, you ask a couple questions and boom, they pick out their car. After they get done driving it, what's the first roadblock salespeople get? What's the first roadblock salespeople get? Well, number one, it's I don't need to drive it. You guys ever get that? I don't need to drive it? Guys, listen, everybody write this down. Fill of the will seals the deal. I know you know that. Why do you keep writing up deals when people don't drive cars? Because you're lazy. That's why. Because you're hoping to get lucky. Guys, luck don't exist. Everybody understand this. Fill of the will seals the deal. You want them to pay all the money? You want them to get emotional? You want them to want this more than they want anything in their life? You want them to want this car more than they want, they want the car they drove up in? They got to drive it. I know this is so elementary, okay? Now listen, what, you say, Andy, but what do you say when they say, I already drove one like it down the road? You say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, every car's different. I don't care if they're exact same cars, brand new, zero miles. They're all different. They were all made differently. Each one of them have a different VIN number. Therefore, it's a different vehicle. Okay, are you ready? All I need you to do is touch it, feel it, smell it, make sure you love it, and if you do, I'm gonna make you a deal you can't say no to. <laughs> Guys, write it down. Andy, I don't need to drive it, totally understand. Look, test drives don't have to be long, but they're necessary, write that down. I totally understand, Mr. Customer. Test drives don't have to be long. They can be down the road and back, but they're necessary. And then I like this little thing. I say, all you got to do is touch it, feel it, smell it, make sure you love it. And in the end, it's completely your decision. If you like it, I'll make you a deal you can't say no to. Fair? Everybody say fair. Fair? Fair? Is that fair? Hey, don't say, is that okay? Nope. No. Say, does that sound fair? People can't say, oh, I guess it does sound fair. People always say yes to fair. They say yes, does that sound good? They say no, does that sound good? But they say yes, does that sound fair? Guys, tweak your language. Tweak your check. Okay? All right, cool. So somebody, first roadblock, I don't need to drive it. Totally understand. Test drives don't need to be long, but they are necessary. It can be down the road, down the service road and back. Doesn't matter to me. It can be 30 seconds. I really don't care. But every car is different. That's why they got a different VIN number on them. All I need you to do is touch it, feel it, smell it, make sure you love it. And in the end, I'm going to make the deal you can't say no to. Is that fair? Let's go drive it. We'll come back, put it together. That's it, guys. Come on, man. Don't get hung up. By the way, everybody write this down. Certainty. Certainty. Whoever's the most certain wins. Everybody, everybody got to understand this. Your sales team has to be the most certain sales team on planet Earth. You don't have to be a genius to be certain. Everybody write this down. Belief. You got to believe. Whoever believes the most wins. Whoever, whoever's the most certain wins, whoever believes the most wins, whoever cares the most wins, whoever's got the most energy and the best vibes wins. Am I right, everybody? Listen to me. If you got a sales guy in your company and he's not performing and you're in charge, you need to sit down with him and say, I am sorry, I have given you the wrong play to run. 
I'm going to give you the play to run for dependable success moving forward. If you're a salesperson and you're listening to me right now, this is going to be life changing for you. Okay, let's move on. What's the next obstacle? We go on that test drive and when you get back, you guys hit them with the trial close, right? Hey, Liam, if I could get the deal right, you know, would you be happy to take it home? If I get the numbers 110% to your satisfaction, you know, like whatever, right? Like whatever you guys say, you guys got a trial close. I know everybody knows a trial close. Guys, you know, hey, watch, one that I always loved. You know, hey, Patrick, how would you like your new vehicle titled? And your name or you and your wife? Uh, just mine. Great, come on inside. Bam! How would you like your new vehicle title? So, Sherry, this is my favorite trial close of all. Because most salespeople go, if I could get the deal right, would you take it home? If I get all the numbers right, would you be happy to take it home? I get 110% to your satisfaction. Watch, Sherry, watch this. Sherry, how would you like your new vehicle titled? And just your name? Or would you like to put you and your husband on the title? Which one? And they go, ah, uh, put us both on there. Okay, great guys, come on inside. And I just turn around and they follow me. Guys, I don't know, I just, that was my favorite one. It, it's dangerous, it's deadly. And by the way, if they say, oh, well we ain't bought it yet. No, 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 I totally understand. All I'm looking to do is give you a quick proposal, blow your mind, and that way I can understand if you do decide to, to take action, I know how you want to title it. And just your name or in both? In both? Okay, great, guys. Come on inside. Hey, smile with your teeth, smile with your eyes. Everybody do me a favor. What would you look like? Everybody, write this down. What would I look like? What would my face look like if I knew there were zero customers in the world that would say no to me? What kind of peace would I have? What kind of belief would I have? What kind of certainty would I have? What kind, of, what kind of love would you treat every customer with if you knew no one was ever gonna say no? Can you imagine a drive-thru? When somebody pulls up to the drive-thru at McDonald's, they order and then they go to the second window, they pay, and then they get their food and they go, through, they go out the other end. Nobody ever goes through the drive-thru at McDonald's without going through the other side without their food. I don't see worried cashiers at McDonald's, they're like, oh, I hope this guy pays. They know he's gonna pay. He showed up at the drive-thru. This is no brainer. Everybody understand this, please. One of the reasons why I've been able to do so well in sales is because of my perspective about sales. Every single one of you in here, I think you need a new set of eyes, a new set of lenses, a new set of perspective, a new way to see things. If you want a check you've never seen, you're gonna to have to see life differently than you've ever seen it. Now, it's gonna take some skill. It's gonna take hard work. We're, go we're going into the last quarter of this year, and I'm gonna tell you this right now, no one's gonna outwork me. You, you need to say to yourself, no one's gonna outwork me. Until December 31st, and that ball drops January 2021, 2025, or, or January 1st of 2025, no one's gonna outwork me. No one's gonna make more calls than me. No one's gonna have more energy than me. No one's gonna outlast me. No one is, no ways. Super important guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history if you are? In the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. You gotta say that to yourself. And by the way, that's how simple the car business is. Let's talk about these road, roadblocks, okay? Customer says, after we hit them with the trial close, hey, Sherry, how would you like a new vehicle title? They say, I need to think about it. Everybody write this down. I need to think about it. It's a very common response. By the way, everybody understands something really quick. Are you ready? When somebody says they need to think about it, the reason why they're saying they need to think about it is because the last time they went inside and worked numbers, they end up buying a car, they paid more than they wanted, they walked through those double set of doors, it took three hours longer than they thought, and they don't wanna go back in and go through that. I'm gonna tell you what they want. They wanna tell you something like, yeah, we'll get back with you, we need to think about it. They wanna drive off the lot, they wanna text you and say, what's your best deal? That way you can play no emotion, you can't have anyone else help you, you didn't get them in through those double set of doors, you ain't able to look at their trade in two or three times, 
you weren't able to, to, to show them love or persuade, influence, paint pictures, tell stories, sell ideas, sell situations. You weren't able to do your job at all. You weren't able to so, show any passion. Dude, passion and emotion is the number one thing missing in the freaking car business anymore. And you can't do that if you let them leave. They can't see how much you care about them. If you let them leave, right? Somebody tell me they can show someone how much they care through a text message. Impossible. Don't let them leave. Everybody write this down. Rule number one, don't let them leave. Rule number two, never let them leave. Rule number three, they can't leave. Now that we got those rules out of the way, nobody's leaving. Everybody get it? All right. So what do we say? Everybody listen to me. Every single person in your car dealership that, see, so I'm going to be honest with you. This is how I would roll. Let's say I'm the manager. You ready? So it goes like this. Brandon's my sales guy. I'm the manager. I say, Brandon, and let's say I'm going to go, I feel like you guys are my team. I'm going to say, Brandon, Nick, uh, Calvin, Patrick, and Frank, and Liam, and Miguel, and, Pat, and, and all you guys, and Sherry. I'm going to ask every one of you guys, are you an amateur or are you a professional? Listen, I just, I, I don't need anything except I need one of those two words. Can everyone please, the amateurs in the room, raise your hand and the pros in the room, raise your hand. And if they raise their hand the, and they say they're a pro, I'll say professionals know how to overcome the five common objections that they get every day. The five common objections would be, I'm just gonna, hypothetically, I don't need to test drive the vehicle. I need to think about it on the lot. I need to think about it on the pencil. I need to talk to my wife. The price is too high and I want more for my trade. Let's say that that's what I said they were. And I'm going to say, if you said you were a professional, that means that I can tell you right now on the spot that I need to think about it. And then you can overcome that objection right now on the spot right here. Amateurs don't know how to overcome objections. Quickly, we need to identify if you're in management, who are the amateurs in your store? And you say, well, Andy, how do I identify that? It's very easy. You page everybody into a meeting and you say, guys, we're gonna choose the five top common objections that we get in our dealership. And we are going to memorize how to overcome them in front of the entire room because this isn't about your pride. I'm not trying to embarrass you. This is your job. It's called a career. Holy crap. People say, I, I, my salespeople don't want to train. They don't want to do their job? Your people don't want to do their job and you're okay with that? You should be fired. I would fire that manager immediately. Why? Because he's not allowing our salespeople to be dependable, have dependable success. Listen to me, if you don't want the salespeople to win, fine, go somewhere else. But managers, listen to me, you need to identify who can't do these. Now listen, I'm gonna be really clear. Number one, remember I, I went through the test drive one. I don't need test drive it, totally understand. Test drives don't have to be long, but they're necessary, okay? Very simple. Okay, I need to think about it on the lot. Everybody should know this one. Of course you need to say, I don't need to, hey Andy, I need to think about it. Of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I would like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers. So when you go home, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair? And I, and I take my hand and I stick it in their chest. Now, number one, they're not going anywhere. People say, well, it takes longer than five minutes. No would you rather them walk through those double set of doors, sit down at a table and start filling out a worksheet or would you rather them get in their car? Oh, you want them in the double set of doors. By the way, everybody write this down because we've got some people that don't understand what a five minute proposal means. Everybody write this down, earn the right. I said I need five more minutes. I'm going to earn the right by being a professional to get more than five minutes by doing my job professionally. Everybody get it? So it goes like this. Of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I would like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers. That way when you go home, Patrick, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair? Boom, hand and chest. 
shake their hand, bring them inside. Okay, now when I sit down, are you ready? This is the word trap, okay? I say hypothetically, are you ready? Everybody say hypothetically, write that down. I say, Patrick, hypothetically, let's say that you did end up purchasing it. Everybody say hypothetically, hypothetically. Patrick, let's say you did end up purchasing it. How would you like your new vehicle title? Okay, cool. What address would you like the title mail to? Okay, cool. What are the phone numbers you want to use? Okay, cool. And then the email address in case there's ever, you know, a warranty uh, uh, claim or something that needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? Or there's a recall. What, what's the best one that we can put down for a good email for you? Oh, okay, cool. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then I go, Patrick, by the way, you're going to be trading in the vehicle that you drove up in today. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Awesome. Let me grab the keys of that so I can get two seconds of information off that so I can have my manager peek at it real quick. Is that fair? Notice, is that fair? Yes. Okay, boom. Grab the keys. Patrick, what do you roughly owe on it? How long have you had it? Okay. Is there anybody else on the loan on this one or is it just you? Okay, cool. Now I got their trade-in information. And then what would I say? Patrick, by the way, everybody write down, by the way. By the way, I just say it. Everybody, like, nonchalantly, watch how I flow. Worksheet, trade. Hey, Patrick, by the way, when you bought your last car, payment was probably important to you, wasn't it? Everybody do me a favor. Nod your head like this. Yep. Sherry, there we go. Sherry, by the way, when you bought your last car, payment was probably important to you. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Just like payment's going to be important to you on this one. Am I right? How do I know? It's like Nostradamus. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to have my manager check out your, check out your trade. Also, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you the exact penny uh, for the payment for the new vehicles. Does that sound fair, Sherry? Yep, that sounds fair. Okay, cool. Now what do I got? I got a write-up sheet, I got a trade card, and I got a credit app. Guys, don't tell no one, shh. They're buying a car. Yeah, I know, I know. They're, they don't know, but I know. Because I know when people go through all these steps, they've already gone down the rabbit hole, they've given me more information than they've given anyone else, I am here to let you know they are a signature away from buying a car. See, I want you to understand, everybody, everybody, everybody understand this. Whoever can get the most information from the customer when they come inside, the customer, even though they might not have signed a commitment, if terms are agreeable, I will buy now. They've already given more information. They've given their credit app. They've given their keys. They've given their trade-in. They've given their date of birth. They've given their social. They've given their address. They've given their email. Listen, guys, each piece of information they give you is a commitment to buy. Everybody get it? I love sales, man. No one even knows what's going down, but we know what's going down. Okay, now, watch this. Number one, if you don't, if you can't overcome, I need to think about it. On the lot. And you have to go get your manager. You are useless to a car dealership. Let me say it again. You are useless. See, listen to me. Managers, salespeople. Everybody listen. If I was a manager, if you can't get someone inside which is the easiest part of everything, you are useless. And by the way, I'm not disrespecting salespeople. I'm saying, are you a professional or an amateur? We need to identify right now, we need to have two terms that we say in our company all the time. We have amateurs and professionals. Amateurs don't get internet leads. Amateurs aren't allowed to go take ups. Amateurs aren't allowed to work here until they become a professional. What is a professional? Somebody that can perform at least the top five or six objections. Okay? Now, on the lot, I need to think about it. Everybody, everybody write this down. On the lot, I need to think about it. That's a, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given enough information, I'll think about it. That little deal. Now, when we go inside, there's a pencil. There's a proposal, right? When they bring in the pencil and they say, great news, and they go, this is the price, this is the trade-in, this is the payment, this is the term, this is the interest rate, blah, 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 okay? This is what you'll owe, whatever. What happens when they say, I need to think about it again? Okay, listen to me. You got to ask your sales team. All right, we're not outside anymore. Now we're inside. Now it's not like, of course you need to think about it. I need to give you some numbers. Now there's numbers. So now what do we say? Are you ready? First of all, everybody write this down. I need to think about it is not an objection. I need to think about it is a smoke screen for another problem. We must identify what is the problem. 
it is something that is written on that piece of paper that is the problem and they're not telling us everybody do you want to know why because the customer just wants to get out of there everybody listen to me when you got a customer that wants to get out of there it's because they feel like the salesperson they're working with they can't work out the numbers with so they just want to leave all of the hard work that we did they're literally going to pull out of our gate they're gonna pull in the gate across the street they've already decided they want to buy and they're gonna walk in and be a lay down I see it every freaking day so we need to train our salespeople you ready somebody says I need to think about it okay what do you say everybody just think about it I totally understand okay ready write this down I've been doing this for a long time by the way if it's the first day they don't have to say that but I would say something along the lines of this hey I totally understand Sherry I've been doing this for a long time and when someone says they need to think about it what I've learned is that it's either one of two things number one that you're no longer interested in the vehicle Sherry but I don't think that's the issue because we wouldn't have made it this far and we wouldn't be sitting here right now with numbers on this car if you didn't love the car so it leads me to believe that it's number two Sherry that something's concerning you notice watch that something's concerning you within the numbers of the deal Sherry what is concerning you the most I take my pen and I take the piece of paper and I go is it the price the payment or the trade-in which one and she goes it's the payment I didn't get that could you try again Siri she's like I don't understand what you're saying Andy all right does that make sense hey totally understand yeah hey, Patrick I've been doing this for a long time and when someone says they need to think about it what I've learned is that there's that there's either one of two things number one Patrick you're no longer interested in the BMW 7 series but I don't think that's the fact because you wouldn't have made it all the way down here we wouldn't be inside talking about numbers if you didn't love it so I know you love it so it leads me to believe that it's got to be number two Patrick that something's concerning you within the numbers of the deal Patrick what is concerning you the most is it the price the payment or the trade-in which one and then we just shut our mouth and then Patrick says something and then whatever he says you say I totally understand and we say let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is we flip the paper over we go through the price close we go through the payment close or we go through the trade-in close and we start to feel, make the customer feel like they've been heard that they've been seen that they're important that they're significant and we start the negotiations by the way everybody write down reposition reposition I'm going to show you this it's a power move so watch this Patrick I'm sitting here with you and I'm like going over this pencil and then Patrick's like yeah and I don't know Andy I need to think about it but I'm not scared I just say oh, okay cool and then I go through my little deal and I say what's concerning you the most something's got to be concerning within the deal is it the price the payment of the trade-in which one Patrick goes it's the price I say you know what Patrick I'm gonna show you something that's gonna blow your mind would it be okay if I scoot over here I want to show you this and then I get even closer to Patrick why the closer I am to Patrick the harder it is for, for him to say no to me if I can put my arm around Patrick Patrick can't get away from me I can close him I didn't tell you to put your arm around him I said if I could put my arm to arm around him Patrick's in proximity of being close to me where it's harder for Patrick to say no to me everybody write this down increase your odds increase your odds of closing that is the number one thing that great closers do they're always um, closing the gap they're always increasing the odds okay now if it was a price I'm giving an example right let's say Patrick it was a 2017 Ford F-150 with 82,000 miles and he says it was the price I'd say Patrick number one totally understand so here's what we got Patrick 2017 Ford F-150 82,000 miles we know this is a one owner truck we know that it's 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 knee deep and tread right we checked out the tires on it you know it's been through 127 point service inspection I told you my service manager out here spent eighteen hundred dollars out here in service now by the way Patrick I'm gonna go over let's pretend hypothetically notice everybody hypothetically I can close any deal Patrick hypothetically let's say there was another f-150 down the road a 2017 with 82,000 miles and it was a thousand less you'd probably be like that's a better deal Patrick are you familiar with the difference between the purchase price and the ownership price the purchase price is the, the amount that you'll pay for the truck today the ownership price is the amount of money that you'll spend the entire time that you own it 
and our company, we have a 127 point service inspection. We service these vehicles to be like new for you and your family. So when you drive out of here, the purchase price, which is the price you pay today, our goal other than oil changes and small maintenancing is for you to be able to drive the truck for three to four years and not have to spend any more money. Wouldn't that be amazing? But let's say there was a truck down the road, hypothetically, that was $1,000 less. And all they did was did a detail, change the oil, and put it out on the front line. And they didn't do all those maintenancing. Therefore, they could sell it for $1,000 less. To the eye, it looks like a better deal. But over the next 12 months, you're gonna end up spending, I don't know, $1,800, $2,400 out of your pocket and maintenancing. Patrick, that $1,000 less ends up now being $2,000 more plus time and inconvenience in a service drive, which I know that would upset you. So Patrick, it's not about price, it's about value for the price. You touch the truck, you've loved it, you make sure you loved it, one to 10, it's an 11. If we covered the odometer, we think it had 15,000 miles. It's a great truck, you love the color, it hadn't been smoked in like these other vehicles. You know, like guys, we just rewrap, okay? Price, that's an objection, comes up every day. Super important guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Well, I want more for my trade. That's an objection that comes up every day. Payment's too high. It's an objection that comes up every day. Guys, I'm gonna ask you a question. The average salesperson, how many hours do we believe they truly work a day? Two hours, maybe? Maybe. Who's in charge? I want everybody to do me a favor. If you're a salesperson and you're on this call right now, nobody's in charge of you but you. What kind of check do you want? That'll be the way you work. What kind of check do you want? That'll be the perspective that you have. What kind of check do you want? That'll be the way that you train. I want you to understand the way that I made a lot of money in sales in any industry, not even just automotive, but in any industry and, and even my company today. You right, ready? Don't ever let anyone else know your business better than you. That's a rule. Okay? And, and actually it should be two rules. Two rules to dominating in any business. Rule number one, don't ever let anyone else know your business better than you. You're not gonna know how to close better on paper than me. You're not gonna know how to present better than me. You're not gonna have a better attitude than me. You're not gonna be able to uh, master a stranger better than me. You're not gonna have, um, you're not gonna work with my team better than me. I'm gonna be the best at all those things. So rule number one is don't ever let anyone else know your business better than you. By the way, knowing my business better than me, also knowing the competitors around me and finding the holes in their game. So when someone's like, well, I saw one down at Jay, at Jay Ford. You're like, cool, hey, number one, I can't speak for Jay Ford because I don't work there. But what I can do is most of the time we find ourselves trading people out of vehicles at Jay Ford because you know most of the time they do a 27 point service inspection. We do 127 point service inspection. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. We spend more money in our vehicles up front. Their average car stays in the service department for about a day to a day and a half. Our average car stays in the service department for three to four days, why? More thorough inspection. Look, dude, I'm gonna ask you a question, Patrick. Do you have children? Five. Yeah. Yeah, you said you just had, you got two daughters and a son. They're gonna be riding in this car. I think those inspections are pretty important and so is safety. Listen, dude, anything that goes 80 miles an hour on the highway and is going to have your family in it, I think we need to slow down before we cut a check for it, wouldn't you think? And by the way, since your family's going to be in it, if it cost you an additional $2,000 to make sure that it was the right one for you and your family to feel safe in, and the one that you felt not only logically made sense, but the one you felt in your, in your gut was the one you wanted, would you really walk away from that one for a couple thousand dollars some, somewhere cheaper? It's not just you, Patrick. We've got a family in the car, too. Oh, wait a minute. So rule number one, don't ever let anyone else know your business better than you. Ready? Rule number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass every day. Everybody right now, what are your holes? What are your weaknesses? Listen, if I was gonna come take you out right now, what, what would I come after? What would it be? Okay? Like, like I'm asking, like look, remember I told you most salespeople work two hours a day? Do me a favor. 
your social media, unless you're posting about the dealership, your social media should be turned off during work hours. I know, I know. Why? So that we can be productive. Everybody write this down. Busy equals broke, productive equals paid. Okay, do you wanna be the busiest guy in the dealership or the richest guy in the dealership? You decide. I smoke busy people for a living. Guys, I just wanna tell you, listen, we're going into this last quarter, okay? I got people telling me it's tough in the car business. Those people are, those people are whiners. Don't ever listen to that crap. Everybody, you create your own economy. You create your own reality. Guys, you look at life, you either see what's right or you see what's wrong. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. You can walk into your car dealership every day and you can see everything that's right and everything you love. Or you can walk in there and see everything that's wrong and everything that eats you alive. You choose what you see. You guys choose what you see. And the person that has the best perspective wins the most. Okay, now here's what I wanna tell every one of you. I have one motive for all of you. I, I would love you guys to become so great that literally your name travels around the world and that people literally like call your dealership and they say, can I just come and watch them work? I, I worked in a small town in Oklahoma with my wife. I just wanna finish with this. I worked in a small town in Oklahoma with my wife and uh, it was, I moved away from the city. And there was a small place and it was a little Dodge store. The little Dodge store sold about 60 cars a month. I lived at Lake Texoma, which is in between Oklahoma City and Dallas, Texas. And it was about a two and a half hour drive one way or the other. And I told my wife I wanted to move to the lake because we wanted to have our son when I was 28 years old, 29. And my wife, I was telling her, I'm gonna work four days a week, I'm gonna drive back and forth from the city. It's gonna be a long drive, but I'm gonna go kill it. She goes, why don't you drive to the little Dodge store? And I said, babe, they only sell 60 cars a month. I did go through and talk to the owner of the dealership for a minute, you know what he told me? He told me, he goes, my top guy sells 10 cars a month, and the most money that anybody's ever, or the most cars anyone's ever sold in our store was 10 to 15, 10, 15 cars that made eight grand. Guys, I can't wipe my butt with that. I'm, I'm be, I was like, no ways, I gotta go to Dallas, I gotta go to Oklahoma City. You know what my wife told me? She, this is where I needed to see differently. She goes, Andy, I don't care what they've done. We don't compare ourselves to other people. They have been able to do that, but you haven't been there. Nobody's been able to see what you can do. And, and she said, do you wanna drive two and a half hours or would you like to really show them how great you are and would you like to drive 30 minutes? I was like, well, driving 30 minutes would be great. She's like, Andy, you're the best at what you, you do. You just gotta have a good perspective. If you go in there thinking that, I'm just giving an example, you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. She goes, Andy, I don't care if two people pull in there a day, two, you're gonna sell both of them. That's the way it goes. And if you work 20 days a month, I'm just giving an example, and there's only two people that pull in there, I know you can sell everyone. That's 40 cars a month. I think you're gonna make more than 18 grand. Okay. Guys, I went in there, no bullshit. I sold 40 cars my first month. I end up averaging 70 cars a month. Now I want you to listen to this. I average, yeah, my, my wife was my poster because me and her got on social media. We started posting on social media, which we didn't even get into that. But I wanna tell you something. I end up averaging in that small Dodge store 70 to 80 cars a month, okay? End up making a half a million a year. Made more money than the general manager, managers, and everybody together. I made more money, I think, than the owner that year. But I want to tell you something really quick. I work four days a week, okay? There's the A schedule, the B schedule, and the C schedule, okay? And if you're the best, they let you work the C schedule. That's I'll see you when I see you. Because you show up, you make money, they don't care. They don't need you on a schedule. They know that you're... Guys, listen to me, I want you to become so good that it's demoralizing to put your name on the board with everyone else. They gotta have a separate board for you. Okay, there was me, I was at 80 a month, and then the next guy under me was at 13. And so eventually what they did is they took my name off the board because it was discouraging the staff. And they put me on this other wall over here, and that was Andy's wall, and then there was the wall over here. 
I was I didn't even get the salesman of the month trophy because they gave it out to these people on this board because over here I was just in my own lane I'm gonna tell you how number one perspective I walked in there every day and it was every single day I was like I'm gonna sell three cars every day I'm gonna sell three cars some days I sold seven some days I sold three every day remember guys I only work four days a week and you may say Andy how can I be that good I just told you in this whole call by the way everybody write down one last thing consequences okay everybody write this down ready greatness is found in the extremes if anybody wants to be great you're gonna need to become extreme every night I had a pair of tennis shoes sitting on the porch at our lake house in Texoma and if I didn't sell three cars every day I was at work I knew I had to run three miles when I got home you know what I wanted to do every night when I got home I wanted to see my son I wanted to see my wife but I knew I wasn't gonna walk in that house if I didn't sell three cars and my wife knew that I would put my backpack down on the porch I'd, I'd lace up my tennis shoes and I would take off running I didn't want to run and I don't like running but guess what if there's no consequence if you don't hit your number you're never gonna grow there has to be consequences by the way my wife didn't put that consequence on me I put it on me you guys need to decide are you extreme how obsessed are you about being the greatest in the world and by the way I built a name a name that's called Andy Elliott and I was a car salesman and everybody just stayed a car salesman you guys aren't a car salesman you're a great example for what human excellence looks like for other people and by the way be proud to be a car salesman I still tell people I love being a car salesman to this day I don't I'm not a car salesman I don't sell cars anymore but I was a car salesman for 21 years and I love it now I will tell you something to be completely facts I don't really like a lot of car salesmen anymore I'm gonna tell you why they don't train anymore they don't they don't have any pride anymore in being a car salesman they want to make money and they don't care about people anymore they've got limiting beliefs they, they want to make the best in their dealership instead of being the best in the state and the best in the country and I just don't like that I always wanted to be somebody I did personally I always wanted to be somebody and I wanted to be bigger than just the car salesman in my company you can stay at your company until you die and you can be a car salesman for the rest of your life and be so damn good at it you inspire anyone else who isn't a car salesman to be better at their self in life because they're watching you how about that be an example okay so I love you guys don't ever let anyone tell you what's possible guys I want to say something simple and I'm gonna say it just like I said it to me I'm gonna say it to you no one knows what you're gonna do but you no one knows what you're capable of but you no one knows how hungry you are but you no one can tell you what you can or can't do but you the only person that's gonna stop you is you that's it and I know that that sounds kind of cliche but at the end of the day I always wanted to be somebody and I knew one day if I just kept training if I kept out working everybody if I would just outlast and not quit if you want to be successful stop quitting if you want to be successful quit hanging out with people who don't want to be successful if you want to be successful stop the, the vices in your life that are holding you back if you drink stop drinking if you're not going to the gym start if you're going to the gym currently if you're not getting the results you want go harder if you're if you're not being good to your family go home and you know be better to your family be just as good as your family is as hard as you are working at work okay be close to God you don't you know you guys got to understand God wants you to be great guys listen to me what if I told you some of you are like I want to I want to be a part of my ministry at church because I believe in God what if I told you that your ministry was stronger in a car dealership than it ever would be in a church people come into church and expect something but dude God is love and if you show people massive amounts of love when you're serving them and you're doing your job and you're showing them human excellence and you're working man I'm gonna tell you this I've, I wanted to be a preacher at one point when I was younger and you may say Andy that's crazy guys I'm a born-again Christian totally a sinner saved by grace messed up every day but you know what I've saved more people in business than I ever would in any church I've saved more souls in business in what I do now than I ever would in any church and you guys can do that so so you guys can get it all don't ever think you got to do something else guys listen to me write and, and write this down and we're done I don't need to get a different job I don't need to go somewhere else 
I need to do what I'm currently doing and do it differently. We need a revolution. And you guys can all lead the revolution. And what is a revolution? It's a radical change. We got to make relationships others can't. We got to stand out. We got to be different. And guess what? I promise you, man, you guys will be bloodline breakers, not only for your family, but also to help a lot of other people in their own families. Okay? So I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Hope today helped you a little bit. If you took one little piece away, you took a lot away. Bottom line is, everybody, write this down before we're done. It isn't what you learn. It's, what, it's how you live. Listen to me, guys. All the self-development, I've spent millions of dollars in self-development. All so I could live differently. Guys, it's one thing to learn it. It's another thing to live it. Everything you just learned, can you implement and live? If you can, I would hate to compete against you. Hate. Okay? Love you guys. Have a blessed day. Let's kick some butt. Okay? See you guys soon. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, guys. Looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero zero zero. One percenters. Look, I know one percenters that can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I want to get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I want to roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link. It says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.